Osteoarthritis now complains of decreased appetite, epic gastric pain during the day, and weight loss. Well, we're thinking about a gastric ulcer. Okay? So gastric ulcers, they typically are described as this pain that is going to be greater with meals. Pain that is going to be greater with meals is related to gastric ulcers. Gastric ulcers are going to be biopsy, and they, um, uh, as they can be caused by uh, gastric carcinoma as well. So we really want to look at what are these uh, gastric ulcers uh, look like under the microscope. The most common location of a gastric ulcer is going to be at the lesser curvature of the antrum. And if it is at the lesser curvature of the antrum, gastric ulcers can rupture into which anatomic site? Gastric ulcers can rupture into the left gastric artery. That's a complication of a gastric ulcer. You really need to know that in terms of anatomy. So let's keep talking about peptic ulcer disease now. A 65-year-old male presented to the clinic complaining of nighttime epigastric pain and weight, weight gain. Not weight loss, but weight gain. What is the most common or most likely etiology? This is going to be a duodenal ulcer. Why is it going to be a duodenal ulcer? Because in duodenal ulcers, the pain is going to decrease with meals. Duodenal ulcers, pain decreases with meals. Duodenal ulcers are almost always related to H. pylori and can rarely be related to Zollinger-Ellison syndrome that causes what? Distal duodenal ulcers. Duodenal ulcers, pain decreases with meals, and that's why patients present with weight gain compared to gastric ulcers. Duodenal ulcers are never really biopsies as they're not malignant. Remember, gastric ulcers, they were related to gastric carcinoma. Patient with history of peptic ulcer disease in duodenum presents with an acute abdomen. That's not good. What does an acute abdomen have? Rigidity, guarding, rebound tenderness. Ouch, 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 call the surgeons. What is the characteristic x-ray finding when we're talking about this complication? What happened to this duodenal ulcer? It ruptured. The duodenal ulcer ruptured. And what's the chest x-ray finding for perforated viscous? Air under the diaphragm. Air under the diaphragm, which represents the fact that the duodenal ulcer ruptured. So the patient is diagnosed with rupture of the duodenal ulcer. He is found to have signs of hypovolemia and a hemoglobin level of 6. High or low, guys? Hemoglobin level of 6? Pretty low. What is the likely anatomical site behind this presentation? Well, duodenal ulcers are going to go into and rupture into the gastroduodenal. Where what, what was the gastric um, ulcer? Okay. So also watch out for acute pancreatitis with duodenal um, ulcer uh, rupture as well. Again, I want to make sure you get the differentiation between duodenal ulcers and gastric ulcers. So a little bit more information on duodenal ulcers. 34-year-old male comes in with nausea and vomiting. He has localized upper abdominal pain, and he undergoes EGD, and a small ulcer is found in the duodenum. An infectious etiology is most likely suspected. What anatomic region has the greatest colonization of this organism? So we want to relate this organism as H. pylori. And H. pylori is going to be most um, uh, greatest, the greatest colonization is going to be at the pre-pyloric area of the gastric antrum. So what is the mechanism be behind the non-invasive test used to diagnose H. pylori. What is the test that we use to uh, diagnose H. pylori? Well, it's a urea prep test. And so basically what happens is that the patients take the urea solution, and if H. pylori infection is going to um, uh, uh, be there, the bacteria will convert this urea solution to carbon dioxide and ammonia. And when you breathe out, that will cause you to have this increased amount of pH. So what is the rate limiting enzyme in urea synthesis? This is a good biochemistry time for you. It is carbamoyl synthetase 1. Carbamoyl synthetase 1 takes ammonia and makes it carbamoyl phosphate. Chronic gastritis of the antrum and the body with this bacteria places patients at risk for what pathology? Increased risk for what pathology with chronic gastritis of the antrum and the body? from this bacteria? Well, it places them at risk of mouth lymphoma as well as gastric adenocarcinoma. So what hormonal abnormalities does H. pylori cause? H. pylori can cause you to have decreased amounts of somatostatin, increased amounts of gastrin because you are going to respond to that stress with increased amounts of acid, and 
that can cause you to have further damage of the GI system. So just to wrap up, the difference between duodenal and gastric ulcers. Duodenal ulcers related to H. pylori infections seen in younger patients with blood group O. Gastric ulcers are going to be related to H. pylori and NSAIDs and can be seen in older patients. Duodenal ulcers can be caused by increased acid production and increased protection. And gastric ulcers, when we're talking about curling, cushions, um, and with gastritis, uh, like we were talking about, gastric ulcers is usually caused by increased protection. Duodenal ulcers, a high yield thing for you to know is the presentation that duodenal ulcers, the pain decreases with meals, whereas gastric ulcers, the pain increases with meals. The pathology of duodenal ulcers is going to be hypertrophy of the Bruner's glands, whereas the pathology of the gastric ulcers is going to be necrotic fibrinoid debris with neutrophils. The complications are going to be rupture of into the gastroduodenal artery for duodenal ulcers, and for gastric ulcers, it's going to be ruptured into the left gastric artery. And there's no real association with uh, cancer in duodenal ulcers, whereas gastric ulcers, they are associated with 